DigiKey and Adafruit bring you. Dun dun dun! Hi, on MPI. So he gets from Digilent. To the National Instruments Company. They make all sorts of good stuff. What's the new product introduction of this week, Lady Ada? I'm glad you asked. Well, first off, I want to note, check out this. First off, this Digilent logo is really cool. It looks just like that triangle under the I and MPI. So. Yeah. We like Maybe tri- it's coincidence? We like triangles, and uh, we like I and MPI. So it's and got like a Mobius thing going on there. Yeah. Okay, so Digilent <laughs> makes all sorts of modules and test equipment for makers and students. Um uh, National Instruments also does the same, and Digilent's kind of like the hardware branch. Um, and this is an NPI that I saw pop up on digikey.com slash new, which I recommend you bookmark and visit. You visit adafruit.com slash new and then digikey.com slash new once a week to get all the NPIs. So this week Sometimes it's... Sometimes more than once a week. Maybe every day. This week it's the Digital Discovery Board from Digilent. And um, if you're familiar with the Analog, dig- the, uh, sorry, analog Discovery Board... Uh, you know that that's like an oscilloscope waveform generator. This is, as you expect, a digital logic analyzer version. And it's like jam-packed with capabilities. So um, inside, there's a, a Xilinx Spartan FPGA. And that's what lets it do like all the high-speed stuff. There's a little bit of power on the top right. And there's a lot of pins. So um, compared to other logic analyzers, first off, the price is really good. It's about 200 bucks. You get a lot. It's a 32-channel digital logic analyzer uh, from 1.2 to 3.3 volt logic. Eight channels are at 800 mega samples per second. 16 channels could be at 400 mega samples per second, and all 32 channels can be at um, 200 mega samples per second. So you get like 32 channels of digital input, which is very rare to see in a logic analyzer under a thousand dollars. There's a 16-channel virtual um, uh, sorry, there's a 16 channel panel generator, uh, 100 mega samples per second, so it's outputs, not inputs. Uh, there's a 16 channel virtual digital IO, including buttons, which is an LEDs. Um, so you can, I think, use that through the application. Uh, there's a programmable logic supply from 1.2 to 3.3 volts at 100 milliamps. Um, so you can use that to power your circuitry as well. Um, and uh, it comes in a nice case. There's an FT232 that does the USB. Uh, 2.0 interface um, and on the bottom you can just see all the the passive circuitry so it's a nice little board it's very cute and it's got these through hole connections for the logic um, as I mentioned this one does not do analog inputs and outputs if you want that you want the analog discovery the digital discovery however is excellent if you have digital circuitry protocols or devices that you want to analyze or simulate um, there's on the front a high speed port and you can see there's like data and ground interleaved um, you can use this port for up to 800 mega samples per second or four, uh, 400 mega samples per second, but you'll need the high speed add on. So that's why there's two products on DigiKey. One has the high speed port adapter and one doesn't. And then on the side, there are two kind of lower speed um, eight port connections, uh, two powers, two grounds, and then eight pins on either side. So a lot of IO. Um, you may realize, of course, it doesn't have a screen on it, like a, you know, a desktop logic analyzer, because instead you're going to use software. There's free software called Waveforms from Digilent. Uh, it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, um, as well as ARM. So that's like for a Raspberry Pi. So this is a really great pairing if you want to make like a little logic analyzer station uh, with a Raspberry Pi. You can do that. You can also just download the free software and run it on your desktop computer. You just have to register on the website to do the download install it and that's it so that's kind of nice and then the software of course is like really advanced we'll get into that one thing i will say is um digilent has a lot of neat tutorials and walkthroughs and i really recommend going through them because the software is incredibly powerful so i checked out their blog and like here's a tutorial on how to analyze um, an old nes controller like how do these old nes controllers send data well, it's a shift register, but maybe you want to find out for your own. So um, they go through how to wire up and analyze protocols, which is very important because there's so many things you can do with the software. I felt like you, you really need to go through the tutorials to get a sense of what you can do. Because if you don't know you can do something, like I didn't know you could do like device simulation or like data export, these guys will help you out. So check out the Digilent site for, and the blog for tutorials. Um, one thing that was kind of neat is there's just like a scripting language built in. 
So you can script the inputs and outputs, you can do analysis, you can output like output the data that you're reading from the logic analyzer um, to files or like back out to different outputs. Um, so it's very powerful and they have a couple scripting examples as well. So I just want to mention um, it's, it's something that I didn't look at in detail, but it seems like you can do a lot with it. So I think if you are ever stuck in a situation where you're like, I have a very complicated project and I'm willing to put some time into developing a script to help me debug it, um, this would be very useful. So uh, keep an eye out for that. You may not use it immediately, but I think eventually you would. Um, there's also a lot of built-in protocol analyzers. So that's really handy, right? Like I used to, I tend to use logic analyzers for debugging SPI or I squared C or UART. I wanna see the data that's coming through uh, to see if it's matching what I'm expecting. Or sometimes I'm sniffing an existing product because I'm trying to analyze what the protocol is. So there's all these built in uh, protocol signal analyzers like SPI, HDMI, OneWire, I2S. So all the popular stuff. So that's good. Um, and then, you know, I wired it up to a chip I was analyzing. I turned on the I squared C and here you go. You get, you know, the clock, the data, and then at the top, the decoded hexadecimal data being written in red, as well as um, the I squared C write or read flag on the address. So, you know, it's basically like any logic analyzer in that extent. There's also an event pane. So, you know, you can see the data coming through at the top with like all the signals, but if you wanna just like, you're like, I don't care about like the rise time and fall time. I actually just wanna see the raw data. You can open up the event panel um, and it'll give you all the data with timestamps of when the event for the protocol analyzer occurred. And then finally you can export it um, in this case uh, to a CSV file for additional parsing. Or again, you can use one of those scripts if you want to I'll put it into a particular format. Um, but this is basically what I use when I'm analyzing something. It's like, you know, what what data is being written. Uh, in this case, you can see where the acts are, uh, where the starts, um, and the timestamps, so I can see how long it takes for it to respond. That's kind of handy. Um, there's also, like, you know, this was kind of interesting. There's like a framework that you can use to uh, script it in Python. Um, so this was an example that I looked at that you would write, um, you would use Python code as an external application to use the logic analyzer to simulate an LCD display. I thought this was interesting because I never thought of using a logic analyzer as a simulator, but I could see there's some situations where you can model the, the device you're trying to probe and then create a model in Python and then have your hardware instead of interfacing like your microcontroller, microprocessor, instead of interfacing with the literal hardware, you can interface with the simulator instead. So this is kind of neat. I haven't seen this in any other uh, logic analyzers. Um, and finally, um, there are, in addition to those scripts, there are examples for like parsing the data out and actually giving you like more like logical data. So uh, the ADXL 345 is, you know, very popular um, accelerometer, I squared C and SPI. So um, um, check out the blog post, I have a link to it. There's a tutorial on how you can use the built-in analyzer to like, you can see it's, it's writing to the device through the logic analyzer and giving you output. So you can kind of use it as like a scriptable microcontroller. So it's a very powerful logic analyzer. I'll say that. It's like you you get a lot. There's a lot you can do. I spent a couple of hours with it, and I felt like there was so much stuff that I didn't get to try out. Um, the thing that I think really makes it stand out is the price. Can't beat it. Like for like 200 bucks, um, something that plugs into USB, works on any platform um, with free software, it just works and has um, up to 32 channels at over 100 mega samples per second. They can't be beat. There's nothing else that comes close. Um, there's also a ton of tutorials and documentation and the software is fully featured. So you're gonna get something very, very powerful, um, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to it. So if you, if you pick up one of these digital discoveries, I say give yourself like a day or two to sit down and really try everything out. I think you'll, uh, with experience and practice, you'll be able to use the tool very efficiently and uh, pick up an analog discovery and pair them together. So you basically have a full EE bench for a couple hundred bucks and it doesn't even take up any desk space. And uh, we grabbed the video from Digilent. Um, it's four minutes, but it's worth it. So we're gonna play it. Yeah. Uh, it kind of has an overview of just about all the things. Uh, it's like VGA decoding. Like this is so cool. Like it can yeah. do real, it can do HDMI decoding. 
like really, really advanced stuff. All right, so take it away, Digilent. See you on the other side. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and I'm excited to announce the Digital Discovery, the ultimate embedded development companion. Its features and specifications were chosen deliberately to maintain a small and portable form factor, withstand use in a variety of environments, and keep costs down, all while balancing the requirements of operating on USB power. It packs a lot of performance into a small USB powered instrument, more than any device in its class. The closest competitor has half the channels at more than twice the price. It has a 32-channel logic analyzer, a 16-channel pattern generator, 16 digital inputs and outputs, a 4-channel power supply, and a protocol analyzer for analyzing SPI, I2C, and UART. It can reach sample rates of up to 800 mega samples per second and is still small enough to fit in your pocket. We took the form factor and the FPGA of the highly popular Analog Discovery 2 and created a device just for digital signals. The Digital Discovery has 32 digital signals including 16 high-speed inputs and 16 digital input-output pins. When configured as inputs, they become a powerful 32-bit logic analyzer. When configured as outputs, they become a customizable 16-channel pattern generator. For projects that require SPI, I2C, or UART, the pins can be configured to send, receive, and analyze data in the protocol analyzer. The logic analyzer was designed to optimize user experience and specifications, so the user can choose between 8 channels at 800 mega samples per second, 16 channels at 400 mega samples per second, and 32 channels at 200 mega samples per second. It provides single and bus channels for analyzing SPI, I2C, UART, CAN, and more. It is important to note that in order to achieve sample rates higher than 200 mega samples per second, the high speed adapter and high speed logic probes must be used. There's also a 16-channel pattern generator that can generate clocks, pulse, counters, random data, and many other common digital signals. The pattern generator also includes a custom pattern feature that can allow you to create any digital pattern with 100 mega samples per second and 50 megahertz bandwidth. In addition to sending isolated input or output signals, the protocol analyzer allows you to send signals where you might need a combination of both. The protocol analyzer provides built-in SPI, I2C, and UART functionality able to be customized to read, write, or execute combined read-writes. The user programmable power supplies can offer between 1.2 and 3.3 volts and are available to power user circuits. They can be set to any value in that range and can each provide up to 100 milliamps of current. Most circuit connections use simple jumper wires, making it easy to use with breadboarded circuits. If your application requires higher speed signals, the high-speed adapter is available as an optional add-on at checkout. The Digital Discovery offers the best balance of cost, performance, and customizability of any device in its class. But without equally powerful software, it wouldn't be much use. The totally free Waveforms 2015 software package unlocks the hardware performance and brings digital analysis to your USB-connected Windows, Linux, or Apple computer. In addition to the logic analyzer, pattern generator, protocol analyzer, digital I.O. and power supplies we've discussed in this video, the Digital Discovery also comes with a scripting interface that can allow you to create customized solutions to more complex problems. Cross-triggering is also supported and data can be easily exported into Word, Excel, and other tools. But enough talk, let's show the Digital Discovery in action. In this example, I'll be using the script editor in conjunction with the logic analyzer and power supplies to decode VGA signals into an actual image. On the monitor, I'll have a simple game of tic-tac-toe that I'll save as an image. I'm outputting the same VGA signals that come out of the VGA connectors into these two PMOD ports. And since this application requires sample rates higher than 200 mega samples per second, I've attached the high-speed adapter. Now all I need to do is run the script, wait a few moments, and open the image that Waveforms 2015 has saved. Essentially, this device provides a whole suite of advanced features for you to analyze, view, and debug your digital signals for embedded projects, and it fits in your pocket. So go to our website to check out this exciting new project. For reference material, including a reference manual, getting started guide, and tutorials, check out the wiki. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digital's products and services. Thanks for watching! And you wanted to show this off. I on thought the, just uh, quick, yeah. yeah. So this is the. Uh, this it's a pretty nice build. Um, got the FPGA in the center. Got some buffer memory, USB interface, power circuitry, and then um, like a ton of gold-plated pins, 
uh, with protection circuits and buffers on this bottom. So yeah, for, for what you're getting, um, it's a great deal. I think it's, a, it's an excellent uh, logic analyzer that can do a ton. It will last you like a decade easily. All right. All right, thank and you. With that, is I on MPI this week. I on MPI.